What is up, everybody? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets, and I'm back with another prediction video, a late prediction video. This week, I'm going to be breaking down UFC Vegas 72, Song versus Simon. It's a pretty good card, man. Um, we've been losing a ton of fights. We're down to 11 fights on this card. It did have 13. A um, couple moved around, different stuff, people falling off. We got some new added fights. Um, it's not really the greatest card in the world, but I feel like I have some super solid bets on this card, man. Um, before we get into all this stuff, everybody, man, please hit that like button. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Um, leave a comment. Help the algorithm. Um, Discord, I'm going to put the link that works in the description of this video. Um, it's it's awesome, man. The Discord, the Layer Cake Discord is awesome. We got a bunch of people in there. My boy Chef Mikey and his wife Nikki won $600, um, and, and his wife won $500 this week, man. They killed it, giving out good picks, good information, and good jokes all week in the Discord. Also, my boy Dean's been killing it with the tennis picks. Then we got two dudes, Saba and Sean White, who bring in all kinds of MMA news. I mean, every day you're going to find out what fights are dropping, all the, every any MMA information you want. Saba and Sean got it. Um, super, super good Discord. The Patreon is up and running. Um, I just downloaded a whole bunch of stuff on there, a whole bunch of bets. The rest of my bets for Vegas 72. I put on there the Layer Cake Parlay, the Eight Fight Progressive Parlay. It's hit two weeks in a row. Not the full thing, but it's paid for itself one week. And the next uh, last week it won 1.5 units. Um, but yeah, man, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. I got a, uh, a bunch of bets already up. Three bets for UFC 288. Um, to help beat a lot of line movement. We already beat a lot of line movement this week. We've been killing line movement. We beat it with the Gastelum, Jillian Robertson, um, all kinds. And then this week we got Cody Durden at plus 170. You know, he's like plus 115 right now. $110 worth of line movement beat right there on a two, on a $200 two-unit bet. Um, but, yeah, man, it's awesome. It's it's it, it's just to help support the channel. You know, my picks are still on Twitter, Instagram. I'll put them out one one each day. But on there, you're going to get them way early. You're going to get um, DraftKings lineup, my 10 best bets. You're going to get the parlay. And um, I talk with them guys all the time. So if, if you want to join up for that, Patreon link will be in there. Um, we're going to do a quick recap of UFC. Uh, what was it? UFC Vegas 71. And then we'll get right into this UFC Vegas 72. UFC Vegas 71, man. Had some bad luck, some bad stuff, man. Three and three for minus 2.35 units. Um, what happened was I ended up going and putting that Rosa by decision in late because I had uh, Lasman Lucindo. Uh, oh, the catchware under fell off that. So I wanted to kind of even things out and it ended up backfiring on me. So yeah, three and three for minus 3.5 units, uh, 2.35 units. And, um, man, just had some bad luck, man. My three winning bets, Lasman Lucindo on that parlay, only 1.9 units, but she looked really good, man. She's a, she's going to be a problem. 21 years old, and it's that good. The Blades under 1.5. I had smashed that plus 2.5 units on that. Easy as it gets. Um, the Rosa and Marshall over 2.5 rounds. That was as easy as it gets in both them fights. I mean, they, the Marshall fight um, almost finished, but it was after the 2.5 rounds, uh, plus 3.2 units on that. My three losing bets, which all three of these could have went either way, man. Dana Bakria was minus like 2,000 when he got choked out with 36 seconds left, man. That was just weird. Minus 3.5 units that I thought I had in the bag. I was already cashing that ticket, man. Um, second, Junior Tafa, you know, minus 2.95 units. And um, he had plenty of chances. He had Usman rocked like five times, man. He still could have won based off damage because Usman never did any damage. And Tafa hurt him every single round. But it was kind of like the wells Semmelsberger fight, you know, um, a lot of control. Except in that, though, Wells was doing some damage on top. So it's just very weird scoring. And then Rosa, um, that was a good fight, man. Uh, it was close. I thought it could have been a split decision. Rosa hurt her in the third round. Second round, first round were really close. But it is what it is, man. Brings my overall betting record to 218 and 151 for plus 93.8 units. My 2023 record is 39 and 26 for plus 16.5 units. Um, it's been a little weird, you know. I've, I've been win one week real big and then lose the next week little, but um, I need to uh, we need to change that, you know. We need to um, we need to get get back to uh a five to 10 week winning streak. You know, I want to go for the 20, like back in the day, but we'll, we'll start slow. We'll start small. Um, but yeah, man, let's get into this Vegas 72 card. You know, my fight's going to be out of order because these are all, I do them in all different times. But the first fight that I have wrote down is Stephanie Edgar versus Irina 
Alexiva. Stephanie Edgar is eight and three. She's currently sitting at minus 300. She's 34 years old, five foot six with a 68 inch reach. Irina is four and one, currently sitting at plus 240, 32 years old, five eight with a 66 inch reach. Uh, the Russian Ronda. Um, weird name, but whatever. Stephanie Edgar, man, this girl's good. I, I really like her. I mean, she, she's got great grappling her striking, you know, not really all that good, but it doesn't matter in this small cage because she's able to strike into the clinch. And from the clinch, she's able to judo throw girls from the, from there. She's usually able to, um, throw some ground and pound transition super well and, um, get arm bars, chokes. She, she rear naked choked Eileen Perez, arm bar, Jessica Rose Clark ground and pounded out Shanna Young. Um, lost a close decision to Tracy Cortez, but uh, she's looked good to me, man. She's got excellent judo, excellent BJJ and subs, really good top control, um, good ground and pound. She usually ground and pounds these girls until they want to give up one of the submissions. She's always looking to take the back. And what I really like about her, she's always looking for the finish. If you see here, she's set. She's got eight wins. Seven of them are uh, finishes, one decision, three KOs, four submissions. Um, she's very aggressive girl. She's she's a uh, good size, five foot six. She's actually going to be um, two inches shorter here, but have two inches of reach. But I think she's going to be the thicker girl. Irene um, Alexiva, I don't know. Irina, I don't know how she's really in the UFC because I, I mean, she's 32 years old. So she hasn't fought in about 18 months and she wasn't all that good the last time she fought. And at 32 years old, how much is she improving? Um, I went back and watched some of her other fights where she's just fighting low level girls. This fight, I thought she actually won the fight that she lost. Somehow they gave it to the other girl, but um, she tried to finish that girl in the first round. She had her hurt and then gassed out a little bit, but uh, yeah, man, her striking's not all that good and her grappling doesn't seem to be all that good. So I'm not really sure what she's doing here, but um, I really like Edgar in this spot. I think that Edgar um, is going to be more than able to stand with Irina. And not, not that she will win the standing. Irina will probably win the standing with her sloppy striking because Stephanie's striking isn't all that good. But this fight's going to go to the ground. Both these girls like to grapple. They're going to get in the clinch. Both girls, um, Irina did some sambo and some judo. Stephanie Edgar, judo phenomenal judo so these girls are going to hit the ground when they do I expect it to be stephanie edgar on top um landed some ground and pound and getting that submission i'm gonna i'm gonna call stephanie edgar submission in that first or second round and um it should be um a fairly easy fight for her like i said unless this Irina girl leveled up like three levels from what she was doing you know 18 months ago she's not going to have much of a chance in this fight next fight is in the women's bantamweight division we got Haley cowan versus jamie lynn horth Haley cowan is seven and two currently sitting at shoot she's about plus 130 now 31 years old 5 8 with this 69.3 inch reach jamie lynn horth five and oh Currently sitting at about plus or minus 150. She's 33 years old, making her UFC debut. Five foot seven with a 67 inch reach. And I'm sick of breaking down these Haley Cowan fights, man. This is the third time. Um, she's a big athletic girl. She was a gymnast. She's got decent striking. It's not like fluid striking, but it's decent. And she's a big, strong girl. She's got pretty good takedown defense. She's got a really good clinch up against the cage. Her grappling on top isn't bad. She can be swept, though, and then, like, defensive grappling obviously isn't all that great. She almost got choked out on the contender a couple times. She did get choked out by um, Kelly Clayton, who was 1-2 and two and 36 years old, 1-2, and two, and she got choked out, guillotine choked by her. Um, I mean, I'm not that impressed with her, but I'm uh, Jamie Lynn Horth is a mystery, too. She's got two amateur wins over um, Lupita Godina. She's really a 125-pounder, but um, she hasn't fought for a while. She blew out her knee um, and still won the fight, but blew out her knee. She's she's uh, she's tough. She's got, like, good, decent Muay Thai striking. She's very tough, obviously. She got her knee blown out in that fight and still came back and won against, uh, what was her name, Myra, Mayra. But, um... Yeah, man, I don't know. I, I I would never bet this fight. I'm going to go with Jamie Lynn Horth just because she's undefeated and she seems to have some ground game because she's finished all five of her wins. Um, She's got, uh, what is it? Oh, she's finished all five of her wins. Three by strikes, two rear naked chokes. So I like the different stuff she can do. She's finished the fight by body kick, two rear naked chokes, strikes, punches. You see in her, um, she's undefeated in her amateurs. But um, she's 34 years, 33 years old, man, get, making her debut in the UFC. So I'm going to say Jamie Lynn Horth actually gets a sub in that third round. These girls go back and forth. She gets a sub. But I'm not confident on that. And I wouldn't bet this with Johnny K. Picks money, man. I would not touch that fight. 
Next fight is actually way up here now, but it's how it is, how I got it wrote down. Julian Arosa versus Fernando Padilla. Julian Arosa is 28 and 10, currently sitting at minus 130. He's 33 years old, six foot one with a 74.5 inch reach. Padilla is 14 and 4, currently sitting at um like plus 110, 26 years old, 6'1 with a 76 inch reach. So you see they're the same size that uh uh Padilla has a one and a half inch reach advantage. Juicy J, dude. Long kickboxing with power. Um, good clinch, good stepping knees, good flying knees. You see him hitting Nate Landwar with it. Dude is super tough, man. He uh he, he's a junkyard dog. As long as you don't put him out, he's going to keep coming. He's got excellent cardio, excellent toughness. You've seen against like uh Jordan, Landwer, Woodson, all these guys. He was dropped in them fights and came back and beat him. And if you and, and not Dawadu didn't drop him, but just them names that I just mentioned right there should um give you a clue to, to who should win this fight, man. Julian Arosas beat Sean Woodson. Nate Landwer knocked him out. Um, Charles Jordan choked him out, choked out Sean Woodson, and then beat Hakeem Dawadu. Man, this this guy's good. He he can be knocked out. Um, but that's when he's fighting, you know, real good strikers with with good power. Um, the last knockout he took to uh Alex Alex uh what the hell Caceres was a sneaky head kick, dude, that he took there. That was a wild, wild head kick. But um, I just like Julian Arosa's all-around game. You see here, too, he's got 38 fights. This is another big thing. He's got 38 fights, right? He does have um six KO losses, but right there, he's never been submitted. Never in 38 fights has he been submitted. And he's fought some of the best people in the world. Um. And he's never been submitted in 38 fights. He can be knocked out. But like I said, he's very well-rounded. He's got good grappling. He's got decent wrestling. He's got really good jiu-jitsu, like I said, with uh, sub and Jordan, Woodson, um, a lot of subs in his career. Fernando Padilla, man, I, I, I watched this kid fight. I watched some tape. He's got good long kickboxing, too, but with volume. Where Rosa has power, this this kid has volume, you know? Um He's been fighting in the LFA for a while. He, he's fought a lot of lower level people. You know, his, his, he beat Derek Minner in the first round, which is probably his best win. Um, but every time he kind of stepped up in competition, he, he's took losses. He stepped up to Dan Ige, lost, stepped up to uh, Spike Carlisle and lost. That was a couple years ago. But um, yeah, man, good long kickboxing, nice front kicks to the body, excellent forward pressure. He's finished 12 of his wins out of his uh, 14 wins. He's finished 12. But he's only got four KOs, man. He does not hit hard. He's a volume guy. But he's got eight submissions. He's dangerous on the ground. But as we talked about, Erosa's never been submitted in 38 fights. But um, yeah, man, Padilla, excellent forward pressure, excellent clinch knees, good BJJ, you know. But um, he has terrible takedown defense, and his gas tank doesn't look good to me in the third round. That's why he lost to Spike Carlisle and these other guys that gas out. Um, I'm I'm all over Erosa here. I can't. I'm I'm so happy that line dropped. I wouldn't have played him at minus 300, but at minus 150, minus 160 to minus 140. You know, I can't. I can't. Play. I, I love Erosa here. I think he's better everywhere, and he has more power. And I think he's going to use his grappling in this fight to get the win. Um, he's one of my more confident picks on this card. Padilla debutant. He's going to have the nerves. He's going to have all different stuff going. And Julian Erosa ain't. And um, like I said, Padilla, man, he, he doesn't have, he's not a knockout guy. So he doesn't really scare me in this fight against Erosa. This is why I picked Erosa over Dawadu back when he was plus 190 because Dawadu is not a knockout guy. And that's the way to beat Erosa. And if you don't, he's just going to keep putting pressure on you, pressure on you, pressure on you, hit you with big shots. So I love Erosa here. Next fight is Cody Durden versus Charles Johnson. Cody Durden is 14, 4 and 1, currently sitting at plus 115 32 years old five foot seven with a 67 inch reach charles johnson 13 and four uh 32 years old five foot nine with a 70 inch reach cody dirt man good striking like he he's won a was it muay thai uh i was kickboxing boxing in a, a mma fight all in one night in one tournament but um He's got decent striking. People underestimate and underrate his striking, but he's got decent striking. You've seen him drop Nicholas Mota or Carlos Mota in that fight, hurt him before he took him down. You've seen him finish JP Buys uh, with some nice striking. Has showed excellent striking against uh, Aori Q Lang, man. The, dude, the dude's the dude been in there with some decent guys. He's got good wrestling. He's got excellent top control. He's got really good scrambles. His boxing good. That one, two, like I said, Chris, one, two. That's what's dropping these guys by his Mota. Excellent offensive and defensive BJJ. Stay safe. He's got powerful ground and pound. Um, I know people like to rag on his cardio, but he he um, gassed a little bit against Chris uh, Gutierrez, but that was a short notice fight, like five days. So.
A lot of people is going to get tired on that upper weight class fighting a way bigger guy. Charles Johnson, good Muay Thai, um, good movement, good good striking. You know, he's fast. He throws a lot of teeth kicks up the middle. He's got some decent leg kicks. He can come up top sometimes. Excellent switch stance striking. Um, but he just fights too much, man. I, I mean, he should. he's 13 and 4. He should be 12 and 5 if we're going to keep it real. Um, he lost to Zygowski, so I don't know how they gave him that win. But um, he should be 1 and 3 in the UFC, and I'm just not really impressed with him as much as other people are. Um, I don't think that he's he's not dangerous. All he's got really is Muay Thai, and he's not that dangerous with it. He's, he's not – I mean, unless he's fighting Jimmy Flick off coming off the couch. Um I think Ty, Cody Durden is going to win this fight, man. I think Cody Durden is going to be able to land some takedowns, get a little control time, clinch him up against the cage. And when they're standing, he can land some big shots too. But I'm just not impressed with Charles Johnson, man. I, I don't understand why people are so high on this guy. Like he's never shown me nothing. I thought he lost to Z, um, clearly lost to Makiev, and then he lost to Ode. So I'm not – I mean, he beat Jimmy Flick. So I don't know, man. I, I'm taking Cody Durden. I actually bet him. I got him at plus 170. Um, so killed that line movement. G give me Durden by decision. I like the over in that fight too. Next fight is going to be a banger in the men's 170 pound division. We got Josh Quinlan going up against Trey Waters. Josh Quinlan six and zero, currently sitting at minus 180, 30 years old, six foot with a 72 inch reach. Trey Waters, uh, seven and one, currently sitting at plus 145, 28 years old, six five with a 77 inch reach so you see he's gonna be five inches taller with five inches of reach um this is a super short notice fight trey waters just fought about a week and a half ago you know i think it'd be two weeks by the time he actually gets in the cage he fought on uh uh april 4 or yeah april 14th so it'll be two weeks when he gets in the cage but um he's tall long he's got decent kickboxing you know nice jab he can pump that jab out there um He's finished all seven of his wins, plus all seven amateur wins. He's he's finished them all. I, I thought he uh, had one decision. I want to say he had one decision, actually. Yes, he has one decision over a dude that must be super tough, Alberto Tover, because uh, he's finished everybody else, all in the amateurs everywhere. But um, he's got decent uh, jujitsu. He's got really accurate hands with power. He can be taken down. He's got a good get-up game. Um, Really nice, long body kicks, plus he, he – uh, Plus head kicks, man. He, he he throws them up there for being a tall, long dude to get us up to the head quick. Um, he can be taken down. He can be choked out. You've seen it. Um, he had, he had the unfortunate uh, luck of fighting a bomb fiend brother on the contender series, and he was looking all right at the beginning until he uh, it went to the ground and went for the guillotine and ended up getting a uh, bomb flu choked. But um, man, Josh Quinlan, dude, this kid throws bombs. Um, you seen him knock Jason Witt into the shadow realms where he went and met up with Dallas Jennings and or not Dallas Jennings, but uh Logan Urban, who he sent to the Shadow Realms on the contender series. Failed for some um some banned substances though, took a little time off, came back, knocked out Wit. Um he's a black belt, brown belt or black belt in jujitsu. He's got he he can he he's got decent defensive wrestling, but he's got a really good get up game. You seen Wit was able to take him down, but he got right up and then hit him with that left hook from hell, dude. His hands are so fast. He's got KO power in both hands. His left hook is murder, dude. You get hit with that, you're going to sleep. All six um all six wins and five amateurs. They're all all finishes. Um, wait, I do want to say he had a decision too. Am I tripping? Yeah, one decision in his amateurs. Um, Brian Williams must have been tough, but other than that, he's finishing everybody. So both these dudes are finishing everybody. Trey Waters, short notice, um, got to make weight again. It's, you know, another time in two weeks, he's six foot five, coming down to one seventy. I'm taking Josh Quinlan. I'm taking Josh Quinlan by KO in that first or early second round. Um, I really like it. I think he's going to get Waters out of there, and then Waters, you know, will get another another attempt in the UFC after this, and uh, we'll see what he's really about on a full training camp, maybe not going against somebody so explosive um, because uh, Waters doesn't move his head, dude. He's so tall and long that he he throws his long kickboxing, but he kind of just leans his head back, man, and I think Quinlan's going to take advantage of that and knock his head off. Next fight is Martin Boudet, which is what he looked like, Boudet, Boudet. Um, last fight against Jake Collier, man. Um, heavyweight fight. Martin Boudet, 11 and 1, currently sitting at minus 120. He's uh six foot four with a 77 inch reach. Jay Collier, 13 and 8, currently sitting at plus 100, 6'3 with a 78.5 inch reach. So you see uh Collier's gonna have 1.5 inches of reach. He's gonna be one inch shorter. Um uh, Martin Boudet, uh, not much to say about him. He's got like 
decent boxing where he comes forward, throws like pitter patter shots like that. Excuse me, he doesn't really wind up and throw power boxing. Um, he throws powerful leg kicks when he does throw them, but um, really he's trying to look for guys to look to be able to just push guys up against the cage like he did Chris Barnett, like he did Lorenzo Hood on the uh, 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 contender series. And um, beat him up, man, throw knees to the body, knees to the legs, elbows, all that stuff. But for some reason, when he fought Lucas Bretzky, he didn't do that, man. He fought at range the whole three rounds. He got beat up. I thought he won the third round, but he lost the first and second, and they gave him a, a win, which was crazy. I had a bet on him, and I was like, no way did they just do that. And then I lost the rest of my bets that night. It was UFC San Diego, so I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't want to have that robbery. But um. Like I said, he's not really that great. All he's got is the clinch, in my opinion. Um, he's got the clinch, and that's it. He doesn't do. He doesn't really get takedowns. He's not working jujitsu. His boxing's okay. Like he got pieced up by Lucas Presky. Jake Collier, man, this dude used to be a middleweight. Ate himself into heavyweight. He's got fast hands for a heavyweight. He throws a lot of volume for heavyweight. He's got decent leg kicks for a heavyweight. Okay, wrestling. If he gets on top of you with that belly, it's hard to get up. Uh, you seen him against Chris Barnett. He took that loss. Um, Man, I lost some money on that because uh, he tried to finish Barnett twice in the first round. He had him hurt on the ground. He had him hurt standing up early, and it just gassed him out. But I, I actually like um, Jake Collier. I like the, his experience. He's fought some really tough guys. He almost beat um, Andre Olowski. I think that he's going to be able to beat Boudet here. I think he stays off the fence, doesn't get clinched up, and then he just beats Boudet on value, man. Pieces him up a little bit, just like Bresky was doing, except the judges don't rob him. Um, next fight is going to be Journey Newsom versus Marcus McGee. I'm not going to go over this fight too much. Uh, it's a short notice fight. Marcus McGee, six and one. Uh, striker, he's finished all six of his wins. He's finished all of his wins in the amateurs. He's got three finishes there. And in the pros, he's finished all six of his wins, all by KO, all by KO. Um, he's lost by rear naked choke and then decision. But uh, he can be taken down. He can be controlled. But, man, he's got power in both of his hands. Um, and he, and he goes out there to bang. He tries to get this stuff done in the first round. Journey Newsom, who, who was supposed to fight Brian Kelleher, He's got good, like a karate style where he's moving around on the outside and then he'll dart in with some good punches. He throws a lot of spinning kicks. He's got decent offense in the defensive wrestling. He's black belt in jujitsu, but he doesn't really use it. But I think he's going to in this fight, man. I'm going to take Journey Newsom here to survive the first round, maybe land some takedowns of his own and uh, work Marcus that way. Because if they just stay standing, Marcus is live to catch him with a big shot. But I won't have no money anywhere near that fight. Um, nowhere near it. Next fight I got some money on, though. We have Cody Brundage versus Rudolfo Vieira in the men's middleweight division. Cody Brundage is 8-3, and three, currently sitting at plus 200. He's uh, six foot with a 72-inch reach. Rudolfo Vieira is 8-2, and two, um, currently sitting at minus 240. He's six foot with a 73-inch reach. So these dudes are virtually identical height and reach. Um, Cody Brundage, man, pretty good wrestler. He's got pretty good wrestling, Good, pretty good BJJ. Decent. His striking's not good, really, especially his defensive striking, but he's got a little power, man. I, I bet against him with uh, Treshawn Gore, and he was able to hit him with a shot when he was backing up, and Gore was uh, stalking him, walking him down, beating him up, and he was able to land a big shot knock him out. I actually bet Doce Lungabula against him, who was piecing him up, and then just stuck his head down to go for a shot when he could have hit him three more times, got the win, and um, instead he put his head right into a guillotine. But here's the thing. um that gets me that on this fight is Nick Maximoff was able to beat Cody Brundage and he was able to out wrestle him for all three rounds, man, all three rounds. He out wrestled Cody Brundage and um, was able to get the decision there. And that hurts uh, in this fight for Brundage because Rudolfo Vieira is pretty good wrestling. He's strong. He's a big dude. He's very strong. And um, his wrestling might not be as good as Nick Maximoff's, but he he's only going to need one or two takedowns if that um viera world champion jiu-jitsu man wrestling pretty good boxing super improved his nickname's the black belt hunter because he's a a, a phenomenal world champion jiu-jitsu player um cardio and fight pace has been better since the hernandez fight but we'll see you know he landed so he landed like 90 something strikes on chris curtis which is crazy because you know chris curtis hits with power and chris curtis was working his body and um didn't even hurt Vieira, man. I was I was pretty impressed on how he handled himself in that fight. He's actually got good boxing now, and he's got powerful leg kicks, man. He's definitely been improving. I think that he should be pretty much better than Brundage everywhere in this fight, to be honest, man. Durability, um, toughness, 
jujitsu, even even in the wrestling. I'm not that impressed with Brundage's wrestling, man. You've seen him. He wrestled down Mikhail uh, Olin Jeshik and was reversed. You know, he, re he took him down. He kept getting up, and then he got reversed. Like, uh, I'm not that impressed with Brundage anywhere. Uh, I'm going to take the air, and I'm going to take him by first or early second round sub. I bet the under one and a half on this fight, and I really like that bet, man. I, um, these dudes only know how to go at it. Cody Brundage, 11 professional fights. Uh, only two has gone to decision. So nine of them, you know, and, and let's see how many ended in the first round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of his fights have ended in the first round, win or lose. And Vieira has five first round finishes himself um, and a couple earlier uh, into the second. You know, he got finished before the one and a half mark there by uh, Fluffy Hernandez. So give me Vieira and give me the under. But in the small octagon, these dudes are both going to go at it. They're both always looking for finishes and one of them's going to get it. So uh, I like the under, you know, just playing both. Next fight is in the men's heavyweight division. We got Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Marco R Marcos Ruggiero de Lima. Man, that's a mouthful right there. Waldo, man, nine and four, six foot four with the 78 inch reach, currently sitting at plus 140. De Lima is 28 and one, currently sitting at minus 180, 37 years old, six one with the 75 inch reach. Waldo Acosta, uh, Cortez Acosta, he's he's a boxer, man. He's got pretty good boxing. He's got good hand speed. He's got a good jab. He's got a lot of volume. He's not really a one-punch knockout guy. Super, super tough, man. He took a ton of leg kicks against Vandera, took some decent shots against Sherman, and um, just was like, yeah, bring him on, started dancing and stuff like that. And he, I thought he was going to get finished from leg kicks from uh, Vandera, to be honest, which it wasn't a good look because that was a very close fight, and his fight with Chase Sherman was a close fight. Chase Sherman was able to take him down in that first round and pretty much win the first round, beat him up a little bit. Um, Vandera struck with him really well and, and started getting beat up in that third round because Vandera always slows down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, man, Acosta, you know, I'm, he's a he's a boxer. He's, he's pretty one-dimensional, but he's a big dude. He's athletic, and he's very, very tough. Delima, man, this dude is is tough, you know. Great Muay Thai. He's got great Muay Thai striking. Very, very, very good leg kicks, man. He's got powerful leg kicks. And I think that's going to be a big uh, point here because um, Acosta or Cortez is a boxer. You know, what are boxers? Heavy on their lead leg. And that's why Vandera was able to tear it up. Well, if Vandera was able to tear it up, Delima is going to kill it because he's way better than Vandera. His leg kicks are powerful. He's got power in his hands. You see when he knocked out Ben Rothwell. Um, He's got wrestling and jujitsu in his back pocket if he needs it. And it's not great, but it's going to be better than Waldo is, Waldo Cortez is, because he was taken down by Chase Sherman. You've seen him take down uh, Maurice Green. With Delima, his whole career, you see here, the way to beat him has been to take him down and choke him out. You know what I mean? It's not really been to stand with him and beat him up. Romanov choked him out. Stefan Struve took him down, choked him out. Ovin St. Prue took him down, choked him out. Antigulov choked him out. Nikita Krylov choked him out. But when he's standing with people, man, he's able to knock him out. You see all these finishes he's got himself. Um, this is going to be a decent fight. It's going to be a good heavyweight fight. It's going to tell us a lot about where Waldo Cortez Acosta is. And I'm going to say that he's not ready for Marcos Rogeria de Lima yet, man. De Lima is a tough dude. You've seen him choke out Andre Olowski last fight after dropping him. Um, I think de Lima's got definitely got the striking to stand with Waldo Cortez Acosta. He's going to have way more power and he's going to have that grappling advantage. He's got a black belt in jiu-jitsu too. And when he's on top, he's very, very good with it. He's, he's heavy on top. You know, he can burn a whole round and, uh, Get, get a Waldo Acosta down. So I'm taking uh, De Lima, man. I think he beats up that lead leg. Then he can go upstairs with some big shots, and I think he uses grappling too and um, teaches the, uh, the the younger and more inexperienced guy uh, a lesson. Next fight is in the men's middleweight division. It's the co-main event. We got Kyle Barallo versus Mikhail Olenjeshik. Kyle Barallo is 13-1, currently sitting at minus 370. He's 30 years old, 6-1 with a 75-inch reach. Mikhail Olejcik is 18-5, currently sitting at plus 290, 6-foot with a 74-inch reach. Barallo, man, this kid, fight nerd, self self proclaimed fight nerd, trains with Damian Maya. His jiu-jitsu is sick, world-class jiu-jitsu, man. Um He's got really good wrestling too. Like he's got some of the best wrestling for a Brazilian dude I've seen in a long time. Um, he's able to take down pretty like Mahmoud, um, dudes with pretty good takedown defense, Aaron Jeffrey and them, and um hold them down. His once he takes your back, man, he's got your back for the whole round. He needs to get some more finishes, but that they'll come. He's got good striking. 
Um, he's got like a karate stance where he bounces in and out, uses his range, hits you with a couple shots. He usually ducks under, hits you, hits a uh, power blast double. Um, he's got, he's even got good chain wrestling, man. The kid is good. He's big. He's, he's big for this division. Um, I've liked what I've seen in, in all of his fights. He did get reversed a couple times. He kept going for guillotine's last fight against Muradov, but uh, still was able to get the win in that third round and come up big when he really needed to. And I've been really impressed with this kid. I think he's going to be uh, very, very good in the UFC. Very well-rounded already. Mikhail Olin, J. Chick, man, you've seen this dude fighting at 205 for a long time. He, he's good. He's, he's got good boxing. He's got really fast hand. He throws really good combos. He works the body like a beast. Kind of slows down after one round. But um, he, he, he doesn't throw many kicks. He's very one-dimensional like we just talked about with Waldo. Um but very good in the one dimension that he uses. It's just in this fight, it's not going to work, man. Kyle Barallo definitely has the striking to stand with Mikael to not get knocked out. And his wrestling, that's Mikael's, um, his grappling, offensive and defensive wrestling and jiu-jitsu is terrible. I mean, he was able to, um, he was taken down by Cody, Cody Brundage last fight, and he was able to reverse it and then knock Brundage out. But that's mainly because he's not good. But uh, when he fights dudes like Jimmy Crew or Ovin St. Pru, um, when they got him to the ground, they was able to choke him out pretty quick. Um, Jimmy Crew manhandled him, but he's a big 205er. But I see the same thing happening here, man. Um, Kyle's fought at 205 before. He's a big dude, and I think that he's going to be able to land his takedowns. I'm going to say that he gets um, a, a middle – after I after one and a half, but he gets the submission, man. After that one and a half, but before the end of the fight, I'm gonna say he gets that submission. Main event time, man. And I broke this fight down last uh last week for everybody. And um it's a super good fight. One second. Sorry. Yeah, I broke this fight down last week and then they changed it on me, but uh Yadong Song versus Ricky Simone. Yadong Song is 19-7-1, currently sitting at plus 100. Um, he's 5'8 with a 67-inch reach. Ricky, Sim Ricky Simone is 20-3, and three, currently sitting at uh, minus 110. 5'6 with a 70-inch reach. And this is a very good fight with two very good uh, um, bantamweights, man. These guys have both been fighting for a while, even though Yadong Song is only 25. He's been fighting in the UFC for a long time, man. This kid has super fast kickboxing, power in both hands and his feet. He's got powerful boxing. His uppercuts are phenomenal. Fast hands, his overhand right, lead left hook is deadly too. Excellent offensive and defensive wrestling. You've seen Sanhagen kept trying to take him down. He was able to uh, stop them takedowns, keep that fight very competitive. Two to two going into the fifth round, but he had suffered that big ass cut in the second round. Um, knocked out Marlon Marais, uh, knocked out Julio Arce, which ain't easy to do. Had a good close fight with Casey Kenny, but Casey Kenny's a tough dude. That was a couple years ago. Um, lost to Kyler Phillips, got rocked a couple times in that fight, but um, has that win over Marlon Vera. I really like Song Yudong. He trains out of Team Alpha Male. His wrestling, his offensive and defensive wrestling is phenomenal. I, that's never been in question. I don't think anybody's going to take him down to hold him down. He's very fast striking. He's got KO power, like I said, hands, feet, um, throws good knees. He's very very explosive. He's a little ball of muscle, man. I think that this kid's really good. He's got very good cardio and toughness. Like I said, he was starting to take over in that Sanhagen fight. Like I thought he won the fourth round. So I thought it was going to be, you know, two to two going into that fifth and it was stopped because of the cut. So um, this kid is tough, well-rounded, and he's fighting a beast, man. Ricky Simone, man, this dude's got some of the best wrestling in the 135 pound division. He's a chain wrestler. He's got cardio for days. He's got his kickboxing, his striking, very improved. You've seen he was able to knock out Rafael Sunsau. He was able to uh, drop Jack Shore and then choke him out in his last fight. So he's been showing some power in them hands. Um, he's had some close fights in the UFC. Ray Borg, that was a split decision. It was pretty pretty good fight. But um, there's a couple a couple fights. I mean, I'm not. I, I don't take the Uri Faber fight. He got caught in that fight. That was he was supposed to win that fight and he just got caught. But um, I'm not gonna take that, you know, I'd say he has a weak chin or nothing because he that's the only time he's been knocked out. He's been dropped and been hurt a little bit. But um, the one fight that I went back and watched that I did not like when I, I'm looking for this fight is the Rob Font fight because Rob Font, you know, really good boxing, decent um, offensive and defensive grappling, but he was able to shut Ricky Simone's wrestling down. And from there, he was able to piece him up with the stand-up. Um, 
And that's what I think that uh, Yudong Song is going to be able to do here, man. I think that Yudong Song is going to be able to eventually stop these takedowns even early in the first round. Ricky Simone couldn't take Jack Shore down. Actually, when Ricky Simone knocked out Jack Shore, well, dropped him and then choked him out, he was uh, Jack Shore was minus 210 at that point because Ricky Simone couldn't take him down in the first round. Towards the end of the first round, Jack Shore started uh, landing some really good shots. Second round, same thing. Uh, Simone couldn't take him down. Jack Shore was landing some decent shots and then crack, you know, Ricky Simone hit him. So Ricky Simone's live, though. I mean, he's got power in his hands. He's got that really good wrestling. But I picked Yadong Song last week in the three-round fight, and then in this five-round fight favors him even more because Ricky Simone, I don't think he's finishing Yadong Song. So that's two more rounds. He's going to have to hold this kid down and um, hope to not get hit with the big shot, you know, and that's a lot of time. You know, you added like 40% more time onto yourself. So um, I think this is going to be a really good fight. I'm not going to end up betting this fight. I'm just going to watch this as a fan, but I'm going to take Yadong Song, man. I think that he can stop the wrestling and land some big shots on Ricky Simone, possibly even get him out of there in that fourth or fifth round um or even in that first round i just think he's so much more dangerous and i think that his wrestling is good enough to keep this fight standing man um for the majority of it where he's gonna definitely have a striking advantage so uh give me a dong song um i would say uh, you know i don't know man the over under I, i'm not, like i said i'm not betting this fight at all i would bet you dong song especially as an underdog i'm not really sure about the over unders but um it's gonna be a really good fight man Sorry for the late breakdown. Um, I was supposed to go to Vegas. My Vegas trip got canceled. Me and my girlfriend pulled into the uh, Lexington airport, and we got an email right when we pulled in from the uh, casino, the charter we were taking. It said that the plane had broken down and that we weren't going to be able to leave till the middle of the next day, so we just didn't go. But uh, it's been a long week. It's been a long everything. But we're going to win money on uh, Saturday, so it's going to make it all better. So um, I appreciate everybody checking this out. On Saturday, I'll be on DFS by the Numbers channel, Brady and um, all them dudes. So if you guys want to check me out, go support the channel on there. Get it done, man. I will see you guys uh, on that thing. And if I don't, good luck this weekend.